Um, we have last month's board meeting minutes um, for anyone who's interested in that. And the main agenda item I had was an update on the CentOS stocks. Um, while I was in Brno last week, I met with Thomas and Jeremir from the RHEL Docs team. Um, it was a really great meeting. Um, so what they have done is they have forked the RHEL Docs to Amir, which I don't think we want to play with the mirror itself, but I talked to hit them about us forking off of it so we can do whatever we want to it. And they were very receptive to that. Um, so I have not done it yet because I don't know where to fork it to, to be honest with you, to have a master. Um, but I'll get with Fabian. Maybe that will be the best idea to see where we should put it. Um, but basically some things I was thinking we should do besides revamping it, and we have talked in the website revamp about having a docs.centos.org. So this is the perfect place. Um, I'm leaning towards um, Markdown as how we write them. Um, but things I was thinking about was a quick, a quick start. Like how do you basically get started with CentOS real quick? Um, Great. So that was something, you know, quick install. This is how you install it. Um, then also, great opportunity for the contributor's guide, at least for the docs. How can you contribute to these things? Um, so I was really excited after the meeting. So one thing they had suggested was we could automate the man pages and include man pages on the site. And these seemed really hyped and thought that was a really good idea. Um, I don't know what other people's feelings are. They thought it was a quick and easy win that wouldn't um, take much effort. I wasn't sure, of course, what our back end would be. So I don't know I'm, how easy or hard that would be. I'm hesitant to add because we'll need to, um, to Sorry, I, 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 um, we're pretty clear, like, you know, markdown for stuff that's community written and for the stuff that we take from uh, from there, we'll, I mean, we'll want to just keep it in the ASCII doc. So uh, introducing a third build tool, um, I don't know, seems seems like a lot for a small win. Um, I, I guess I'm curious is, um, is it for man pages? for tools that we think are, are pretty specific to CentOS, um, or at least to the family of like, you know, DNF, RPM, those kinds of things, or just man pages for everything that ships. Cause I feel like, um, I feel like the world should just have one place for all of those and not have every distro republishing every man page for every tool that we're all shipping. I think they kind of had for like everything, but as I said, um... I wasn't sure the background of where we're running things right. and so on and so forth. In the order of things, we've got Josh, then Pat, then Davida. Sean, do you have anything yeah, I mean, to move to Josh? No, I'm sorry. I, and I jumped the gun without raising hands. I'm sorry. No, no, Sean, you actually covered almost everything I was going to ask about. Like, if, if we're forking a repo, my assumption is the repo already has a format. And so choosing a different format seems odd. Um, on the man pages thing, I would really want to know like why we're hosting man pages at all. A lot of them have like Neil pointed to a project already that exists, but the number of times the man pages within the context of CentOS differ from what is upstream. Like if, if that's the goal, we should probably figure out something different than hosting all the man pages. Does that make sense? Yeah. They just seem to seem to think that there was a need for these things. Um, and they thought it was fairly easy to do. Um, and whether we can do it fairly easy or not, I don't know at this point. Um, but that was just something that you thought was an, an easy thing that was being asked for. They were excited by my mentioning of a quick start. Um, who, who is just so unclear, who is we, right? Like there's, it's one thing to describe this as something we do, but who's going to do it? Right. And there's the question too. Um, they felt that, and mind you, their internal versus community, 
that basically there'd be a, someone from the community who would architect the whole website and stuff like that. And I'm like, there's not going to be a someone who steps up and does that. And, I, and even if someone does, it will not be a full time person. Um, so I think if we can set things up and have something exciting to work on, I'm hoping someone will step up from the community. But otherwise, I realize it's most likely myself. So, um, but I am excited about, you know, the fact that we will be able to take in contributions and stuff. And I always feel that Docs is an easy place for someone to get started. Josh, is yours a follow up, or do you want to get back in the order? Uh, I want to get back in the order because it's okay. it's going to be a follow up question that takes us on a tangent. Okay, so. Pat, Davida, Mike, and then back to Josh. Okay. Uh, so my question is, around that is sort of if we're going to be posting the man pages, we have very limited effort that we can get our hands on from Infra and all of those folks. And so if we're going to be spending their time producing this, I need to know what the value is. Because I, I will fully agree, like anyone who says no one reads the docs, I agree with them. That's always true. But publishing more docs doesn't actually increase the amount of readership. It just increases the amount of maintenance. Okay. And, and I'm all for us saying that this isn't something we want to work on. I'm just bringing things that were brought up in the meeting. Um, so I, would, I would love to have more doc in more people's hands, but only if it actually makes it into their hands. Okay. Davida, you're up next. Uh, okay. Uh, so do I take the hand off? There we go. Uh, for the man pages specifically, uh, we can look into it if we decide it's worth the trouble. Like, it's probably not too hard to spin up something like the dev man saying that Debian has for manpages.debian.org and doing manpages.senders.org. However, I agree that this doesn't seem to be the like most important thing we could be working on. Like if someone wants to do this and make it their thing, I think we should definitely support that. But um, but also I was about to mention that Sean, I absolutely agree. We should, if we were to going down this path, I would rather tackle this in Fedora first and have like a main pages .org first, and then later have the discussion of, but should we also extend this to CentOS? Because it's going to be very, very similar. It's not going to make a ton of difference. And doing it on Fedora probably gives us a bit more leeway uh, and might attract some more people that might be interested in helping out. Um, on docs in general, um, I think we should be careful if we're going to start from something that is produced by the Rails docs team, that whatever we built upon is easy to integrate with whatever changes happen upstream. I would not want to end up in a situation where we fork the RL docs, we do a bunch of work on them. And then when the next major release comes up, we have to spend an inordinate amount of work to like reconcile what we did with what they did. Um, so I think we would want to figure out a way that we can make our, like, I assume the things we need to do is the branding and then making it, making our documentation like additive to the real one so that we can have additional things on like the community side of Sandos, for example, or how you contribute or like, I assume the Red Docs have a bunch of stuff around support that we probably need to clean up and like not have that for Sandos, like these kind of things. Um, also on Docs, uh, I would point out that uh, we don't really have a formalized Docsig yet, but we do have people working on Docs, mostly you and Sean. Uh, there's a ticket open for the board to formalize the Docsig, and I really think we should just do that so that it's easier to do work on docs and for people to sign up to do work on docs in a like structured manner. That's what I had. And, and I don't disagree. Um, we did discuss how things could go back and forth. Um, my concern with using the mirror directly is we may change things too much that it becomes a bad mirror. Um, and that's why I had mentioned forking it. Again, that may not be the right decision. I'm used to doing docs upstream, upstream, and then they become totally different downstream. So this is a little different. Okay, Mike, you're up. I guess I wanted to say that uh, it seems like we've 
we've really got a couple of different things that we're discussing here. One is very CentOS specific docs, which I think is is going to be inherently uh, different content and possibly a different process than anything we we adapt from uh, from Red Hat. Um, we also seem to be talking about maybe adapting some documentation from Red Hat. I don't know if that goes all the way as that goes as far as doing for rel docs what stream does for rel but if that's possible then that's probably something we ought to embrace and if that if if man pages is step one of that then that's fine um man pages themselves i don't think have a lot of value though they're low-hanging fruit they're probably easy to implement um and uh the uh but they're not specific to CentOS really uh, yeah, we don't generally tweak our docs versus what we are given so it, they're they're just the same man pages as you get everywhere else on the internet more or less so there's not much value except as maybe this is a practice run for how we publish and consume this content um i think that might be all things i have okay josh um, I'm trying to square this this new discussion with the current docs item we have, which is we just froze the wiki, and I don't know that we've actually migrated all the content anywhere else yet, right? So, like, that seems like something we should do first before we tackle a new docs project. Yeah, and I'm yeah. happy to I'm happy to participate there, and I know that I know I'm saying this having not been at the board meetings for the past few times because of travel, but. Um, also, I'm almost positive the RHEL docs team doesn't actually work on man pages. So they're actually asking us to do something for them. Yes, they are. Um, and it's not that they were asking us to write the man pages. It was that they thought it would be cool if there was a place that they could be brought up. And then, they, yes, they could refer to our man pages. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, first things before we do anything, of course, is we need the new website structure that, and I think we're all in agreement with Alexandra's layout and Alon had a design for it, but we haven't moved anything yet. We haven't started working on anything yet. Um, and I don't know if Infra has the resources and we have the resources to have be working on the new thing while the old thing's still running and then we can start working on stuff in the background and then we do a big reveal. I, it would be really cool if we did it at Connect. There's our new website. Um, but yeah, I mean, I took advantage of the fact I was in the same city with them and sat down and I, and I was really encouraged by the fact that they were open to us taking things and doing things and adding things. Um, and then some of our, our stuff potentially going back into their stuff. Um, it was just a really nice conversation. Davida? Uh, for what it's worth, I don't necessarily think doing what Josh was describing requires doing all of the website reworks first. Like we could spin up just a, a simple uh, mkdocs thing like we have for sixdocentos.org, throw it on docs.centos.org, move the existing docs.centos.org stuff under like a sub directory there because most of that isn't super relevant anyway, and then like slowly convert what is still relevant, like contributors guide to the new format, and then start moving content from the wiki over that at least gets it converted in Markdown. And then later when we have a new website, we can integrate this into the new website in the like layout and the graphics and all of that, but at least the content part of this is done. Because I expect the bulk of the work, especially the bulk of the work that the people in this call can help with is gonna be the content part. Um, at least speaking for myself, I don't think I can provide a great contribution on like the graphics and design part, and I'm happy to leave that to the folks that enjoy doing the kind of work and are good at it. Uh, but I'm happy to like spend an afternoon going over like a list of pages that we decide from the wiki are useful and trying to get them moved over in a way that makes sense. Um, so if we want to do that, I think that's what we could look at prioritizing now. And then in parallel, we can keep the conversation going with our ad docs folks and see how we can integrate that uh, and, and all the other stuff we've discussed. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the plan of action. I mean, we're not going to turn around and take the docs and turn them around and do anything with them immediately. And like I told them, I wasn't even sure what our infrastructure would allow for us to do and how we would do it. Um, but, yeah, so, I I mean, we've been talking about redoing the website for two years now, two plus years. So, I mean, either between FOSDOM or that community day at Red Hat Summit, I mean, two really great times to unveil something bright, shiny, and new. So, my proposal here would be we we formalize the docsig, we get a docs namespace on GitLab Centos, we make a repo there, we we start putting stuff there in mkdocs.com uh, format, like we do for sysdocentos.org, and then we ask Infra to, can you please hook this up to docs.centos.org like sysdocentos.org works? And like all of these, we can do fairly quickly, and then we at least have a, a place that we can do work on, and then people can do work on at their leisure, and then, by the time Connect comes, if there's something that we feel we can show off, we can show it off. If not, we can book like four hours and like work on it together in person, which yeah. is also probably a good idea regardless. Yeah. Um, Davida, do you want to <laughs> open a ticket being that you've ordered it so succinctly? Um, uh, as, I, am, uh, I am happy to do so. Uh, however, we already have a ticket for like actually having the doc sig so i think we should formalize that close that and then these dovetails from there i think okay um so you don't think the work itself i now i'm talking separate from the doc sig ticket you don't think the work itself needs an issue uh just a track I, I don't want to start working a place that then we end up having to move anyway once the doc is established given that we have done no work so far i would rather do everything from the start in the place okay. where it's gonna live all right let me just check and make sure we have enough notes that's it ticket all right hang on i just want to add some more notes but yeah i'm, I'm more than happy to expand on the on like the description in the ticket there on another ticket. All right, just let me know if I'm forgetting anything. So we want to create the space in the GitLab and the, this is separate from the docsig ticket. I mean, I think this would be a thing that the docsig can take on when it's formalized. I, I'm basically trying to find a way that we can have these conversations separate from the board conversations because I think a lot yeah. of this isn't really a board thing. It's, it's more an operational thing and these meetings are probably not the best place to have this yeah. conversation. Okay. Okay. Um, is Brian here? I don't think he's here. Uh, he was. I see he's square. Yes, yes he's here. Yeah, Brian, I'm here. I left the steering committee as a ongoing discussion i know you closed out the ticket um yeah so let me give let me give a short explanation on why um because uh, so i think um sean you and i should probably work together to put that smaller working group together i think we're we're in a better spot now um just dealing with travel and other things that that happened over the past couple of weeks i think we'd uh we're in a better spot to do that smaller group. But since we wanted structural changes to things, I wanted to be sure that there was a clear dividing line from what we discussed in the board meeting uh, last month and then whatever comes out of the uh, the smaller group discussion, just so that we're clear on, uh, on where we're going out of uh, the outputs of that. So that's why that ticket is closed, but I, I still think we need to move forward on some of those discussion items uh, as it comes out of uh, the, the smaller group discussion. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's an important topic. Um, and I know it may end up being asynchronous communication between a few of you in order to get it done and then bring it back to trying to do it in a larger group. Um, because I, I know it was hard to find a time that everyone was available. So async may be the way to at least start those conversations. 
Does anyone else have any comments on that? All righty. Um, so we're going to actually have time to go through the tickets. I'm going to skip down to issues to be closed and number three, which I think y'all did close before the meeting. Yeah, I closed that one. Um, just want to say great work from everybody. It took a while to get it done, but it is done. Um, and it's a, I think it's a good win for us. So congratulations, everyone. And that is closed. Yeah, thank you to Brian and the, the stream team. It is very exciting. Yep, which is why I left it on, even though we closed it behind the scenes. Um, I wanted to give everyone some recognition for the work and publicly. All right, so these are the same random tickets we've been carrying around the last couple of meetings and have not gotten to due to other um, topics that were more important in that they were more relevant at the time. So, all right, we've got secure boot number 67. Do we have any updates on that? Brian, your last comment was three months ago. Yeah, so the um, the the things we're waiting on are basically negotiating with Microsoft on some uh, some technical implementations for um, they they implemented a policy that would exclude some of the existing shims that are out there, even if we update them. Uh, and that's uh, that's in the middle of discussion right now, uh, including some of the other stakeholders. Um, uh, out in the community space too. So that's uh, that's one discussion. The second one is the uh, the technical steering SIG. If um, if we're going to have a separate SIG root of trust, one of the things that we have to include in each of our reviews is a like a statement of governance for uh, how we're actually going to manage the keys and and things like that. And that's one of the uh, that's one of the activities that we thought was probably good for the technical steering, whatever group that is, uh, to perform. Uh, basically, the group of SIG chairs that uh, they get together and perform technical operations. So we need to close those two items before we can get to any technical implementation. But uh, those are, yeah, those are, the, those are the two things that are in progress. So once we close on those, then we can start talking the, the actual technical bits. I'm just going to call it the technical group, being that we're most likely not going to call it a steering committee. It's effectively an oversight committee, right? Like that's yeah. what it's that's what its job is, is to be an oversight. And let me know if I'm wrong by calling it the keys. All right. Um, is there any other things to add to that before we move on to the next issue? All right, 116 is the matrix bridge. Um, I have some context on the matrix stuff. Um, I have filed a ticket with Fedora Infra that I cannot link to you here because my client doesn't have chat enabled for some reason. Is that um, the 29? It's, uh, it's on the Fedora Infra uh, peg you were saying. Okay. It is... Uh, where the hell is it? Sorry. One one five five four. Uh, but basically, the current state is that the IRC bridge is gone and it's not likely to come back. Um, on the matrix side, we now have Sean acquired control of the centos.im domain, and we already have centosproject.org. What I would like to do is to set up this the same way that Fedora is set up. So we we have centosproject.org for like official rooms. So that's where we would have rooms for like CentOS stream and also for the various SIGs. And CentOS.im is where people could have user accounts if they wanted to have accounts with a CentOS affiliation and where people can create their own like one-off rooms for whatever they want to be without them being official. 
the caveat for doing that is that apparently money is involved uh, because my hope was that we could just do this and have it rolled up under the Fedora contract, but it doesn't sound like it is so easy and that ticket has details on that. Um, so this is the technical part of this. There's also a, a policy conversation, I would say, that we should have on assuming this technical stuff is all resolved. Do we want to officially move to Matrix? Do we want to sunset IRC? Do we want to keep both in parallel? That's something that I feel the board has to vote and decide on, not necessarily today, but that's the that's the policy part of this that I think the board should weigh in. Okay. Do we need any completion from the Fedora Infra ticket that will determine our voting? Um, I know I didn't word that very well. So. <laughs> I don't think the Fedora ticket is necessarily blocking because we could just start making rooms on the Fedora on like fedoraproject.org and then later move them over if we really wanted to. I personally rather not because it's much easier to start things nicely from the start. But this this turns out to be like a, a major like quagmire that might be an option. Um, I mentioned this this morning to Sean in another meeting. What I think we need to do there is that like Sean and Justin need to sit down and figure out the specifics of what what is missing there, what needs to happen. And then if this requires like Santos has a project to spend a bunch of money on this, then we can have that conversation. If this ends up being something else, we can figure we can figure it out, but without knowing the specifics, it's hard to do this in the abstract. Okay, Sean, do you want to figure out any costs and budget concerns we have before we potentially vote on any policy in the coming months? I, it, yes, it's on my list to talk to Justin about it. So, um, okay. if if that would be, if if that's a kind of a linchpin for the board decision on things, then well, uh, yeah, if it's five thousand dollars and we don't have it in the budget, I don't want to have a vote that says we're moving the matrix. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. For what is worth, my impression, like as an outside observer, we know like insider information, but my impression is that the IRC bridge stuff isn't likely to get resolved anytime soon. No. I will say that the bridges are up for OFTC, but I know we don't want to move again. So. E e e yes, that there is that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't believe anybody here or anywhere would like to volunteer to spin up a whole new IRC presence there. <laughs> <laughs> We just start our own IRC network. Yes, it would be great. <laughs> All right, I thought I had heard a buzz of a hand, but I think it was Neil typing. All right, which brings us to 113 and 114, which I believe was in legal. It is the CentOS.no mirror discussions. Have we heard anything back from legal? These no, and that's completely fine, fallen but... off my radar to ping them about it. So, so Sean, is this supposed um, to be you? I think so. Okay. Well, I mean, I I started. I had legal conversations but months ago. I don't know how long it's been, honestly. So, um, do you want to maybe comment on those two tickets? And sure. I don't know if they're assigned to you already, but if they I'm are, I'm doing that right now. At least yeah. 113 wasn't. Just so this person has an update on like that we're not just ignoring them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be better on making sure that every every ticket is assigned to somebody. All right, those are now yours, Sean. Cool. Already discussed three. So that is all our issues. Thank you everyone for us, us catching up on all of those. Um, um, if, if I may, um, given that we're doing issues, uh, we have a few more on the, on the tracker that weren't in the agenda. And I apologize for not adding this to the agenda earlier because I should have, but I forgot. Um, okay. What numbers do you have? So, uh, 120, which is the Santos integration SIG. I believe that one can be closed because if the SIG is established and I don't think there's anything else needed on the board side there. Um, then Thomas signs it. What's next? 
121? The one I mentioned was 120, 120, which is okay. CentOS integration SIG. Then there's 121, which is the DOPS SIG ticket that I was mentioning earlier, um, which I think we could just vote on that now and be done with it, unless folks have objections or want to do something else. Um, let me have a quick count of people. Yep, we can vote. We have a majority. Yes, Pat? Well, uh, <laughs> I was trying to get the chat to pop up, and I instead raised my hand. I am clearly haven't been, been doing video conferencing for the last three years. Well, but the raise the hand thing is in different places in different video conferences. So. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right, so we are voting to formally establish the SIG. Do we want to be proper and have someone make a motion and someone second it? John, you're John. the one doing docs work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to sponsor these if we need a sponsor formally. It's easy enough. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, I don't think you need Robert's rules and we well, normally right. don't, but I had an open in for a foundation meeting yesterday when we do follow Robert's rules of order over there. I've, I've been on boards that do it. It's um, it, it's a spectacle. Um, no, but I think we do need to probably establish like you need a SIG chair, right? So, um, and I guess technically we're supposed to have a board sponsor. I can be both. At least for the time being. Um, yeah, you want? I, I mean, I could be um, I could chair it, but I can't. I'm not bored, so I can't be bored. Sponsor. Or you can chair it. I don't care. You can chair it. I'll let you chair it. <laughs> and Sean will chair. Both of you can chair it. You don't right. have you to fight over the chair position. Okay, we'll co chair. <laughs> you can co chair, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to be stingy with chairs. Coming in closed. <laughs> Done. All righty. Let me just scroll down. See, is there any other issues we want to discuss? Uh, there's uh, one twenty two, which is document offboarding retirement process for Santa Six. Did we do anything there? Pat, you were on. Uh, I, yeah, I spun up a. Uh, open air discussion on it that seems to have uh, more or less reached a consensus around timetables. Um, we want to give people enough time that if they're on vacation, we don't take their SIG away from them, but not so much time that if they move on and just forget to tell us that it doesn't hang around forever. And that seems to be the uh, tricky piece. Yeah. Tomas put it in the agenda, but there it is for anyone who wants to. Oh, was there a vote on the doxig? Is anyone opposed to us having a doxig? Okay, oh, we, no. we, we, we have it a vote, Sean. Kind of a reverse vote, but you said we weren't following Robert's rules of order, so. Um, Pat, your proposal does kind of have dates. If it does. Two of their quarterly reports in a row, then they'll be contacted until they yeah, miss they their first spot. Yeah, they quarter. don't report every quarter. Um, it's uh, Sean. What's the reporting schedule? Uh, they are supposed to report every quarter. Okay. Uh, I would be forgiving of a SIG missing a quarter because that happens frequently, even with even with active SIGs, it does happen. And um, but like you know, I don't know how many quarters you would allow to miss. 
Yeah, we, we said in this missing two, and then you would contact them. Um, and then if they miss a third, that we might need to reward this, Pat. Should yeah. we contact the members listed in the account system monthly? I'm not sure why that, I don't think we need the monthly there, but until they either miss a third report or respond. If they respond, they're, then they're active. If they miss the third one, they are inactive. If the SIG fails to respond, responds that the SIG completed the work it intended and no longer for the work is required, or C responds that they decided to bid the following actions. Announcement, board ticket, and infra. Um, so I think if we reword the first sentence to be a little clearer, I think this is a good pro proposal. Um, Josh and I were the only ones who commented on it, though. So my suggestion is we make that first sentence a little clearer and then give everyone the chance to comment on it in the next month and we can vote on it in December. If everyone is good with that. Well, hang on. I want to look at a calendar and somebody beat. Sure. Oh, you know, oh, oh. It's my phone. But I also raised my hand at like the exact same time. It was weird. Um, <clears throat> as the apparently co-chair of the documentation SIG, I think this uh, new information should be placed into the CentOS SIG guide that is on sigs.centos.org. I agree. Cool. Um, once we vote on it and improve it. Uh, hang on, I'm looking for the date of. Okay, our next sent to us board meeting for December is the 13th of December. Um, is there anyone who right now knows they're going to be PTO? Because if we're not going to have quorum, we don't want to necessarily schedule a vote. I think it's early enough in December that people should be around. Okay. All right. So let's work on rewording that first sentence, Pat, just so it's a little clear on your yep. own. And then we will give everyone until that December 13th meeting to give any comments, changes, or deletions. And then we will vote on it on the 13th. All right, do we have any more issues we want to bring up? I have one which is not an issue, which is a rel source kernel discussion that we promise that we'll try to give an update um, every every month, which was about uh, being able to redistribute uh, kernel source. Was it, uh, I, I will try to find what we said at last meeting about that. Give me a second. It was in September. Where is it? Uh, if someone has something else in the meanwhile, go ahead. I'll find the description. In All right, green. John, you want to go to your update while we look for it? Sure. Uh, I will talk about Brussels. We have announced uh, the CentOS Connect. Uh, we are going to two days. Um, be February 1st and 2nd, it's a Thursday and Friday before FOSDEM. Um, we'll start presentations like uh, Thursday afternoon. So Thursday morning will be meetups. We've got um, multiple rooms um, available for that. Um, CFP is open for, uh, you can put in CFP for the sessions. And we'll also, we also have a CFP open for um, if you want a meetup room around your SIG or uh, whatever topic you want to talk about and do it two hour or four hour meetup. Um, CFP is open, uh, registration is open. So, uh, and there are posts on Twitter and and uh, Mastodon and, and various other places, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. So you can share those posts to help promote it, please. Um, registration is open. The hotel room block will be available soon. I'll let you all know when that's available so you can uh, make sure to book at the uh, venue hotel if you want. 
Um, I just, I'm waiting for the link from the hotel. Um, and we do have dates that covers you being there through um, Monday. So you can, you know, use the room block for costume as well. Um, I think that's yeah. everything on the connect. Oh, we're going to do um, 2000. The first CentOS release was in 2004. So we're going to do, um, we'll do a reception on Thursday evening and we'll do a little bit of a, a birthday party about it. So we'll have a little bit. So uh, I'll announce details on that when I have more details on that. Um, other than that, uh, at FOSDEM itself, the distribution staff room has been um, accepted. So, uh, and we actually have a really, um, like a larger team. Last year it was like me and Justin putting that thing together and we like, we got a team together and Benny's on that team and she's in here. And we also have someone from uh, Ubuntu and someone from OpenSUSE. So it's, it's cool, we've got a, multiple distributions in the distros difference. So um, uh, that has been accepted. I don't know which day it's going to be on. Um, and we will push the CFP for that um, in, in the next couple of days. I think it's technically open on, on FOSM's end, but you know, we'll try to get a, a post out or something with some messaging. So um, I think that's everything around FOSM and, and Connect and stuff we're doing. So. Sean, two things real quick. Because mm -hmm. um, someone asked me earlier and I had to actually click into the CFP. We may want to put the closing date of the CFP on the Connect website. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and then another one, if we are considering having a docs day on Monday, we should probably see about extending the hotel rooms until Tuesday. But that just came up. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll have to go in, you know, I'll go in a couple of days early and I always just end up booking, doing separate bookings, which is obnoxious, but um, okay. I'll look into that at least. Yeah. And I don't think they're giving us that big of a rate change on the hotel that'll make a real big difference. Yeah, it's really not, but. But if it's like, that if, it, yeah. if it's like the Cork website that if you added, if you asked for dates that weren't in the block, it barked on you and told you the hotel. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. I had to do for, for flock. Like I had two separate bookings um, because I, had to, because I came in early and whatever. So. Whatever. Okay. Um, Thomas, are you ready to go on the kernel thing? I think he's frozen. No, 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 no. He's intensely looking at a screen. <laughs> Thomas, are you ready to go? Yes, sorry. I was uh, still reading. Yes, yeah, so it was uh, for the Kmode SIG, the redistribution of the kernel source. And the last update we got from Bex that it was working internally uh, to get an answer. So I don't know if uh, Bex has an update. Uh, otherwise, it was an action on me to create the ticket, which I didn't do. So I will create the ticket after this meeting. So if Bex is not around, I'll ping him after. Uh, I'm here. Uh, we have sent a response to the folks in the Kmod SIG. So they've been answered and enabled. Well, they haven't been enabled. They've been given a path forward. There's engineering work that will be required. Thank you. All right, we are sitting at 47 minutes, which means we do have 13 more minutes. Do we have any other business to discuss? Going once, going twice. All right, everybody gets 13 minutes back to their day. Thank you everyone for attending. This was a good meeting and good discussions. Take care Thank all. You.